Hello everybody, Roland Gosling here, Principal Data Architect for 3 Cloud Solutions. I want to talk about Synapse Workspaces. Um, yeah, they're, they've become the sort of launch pad for all things having to do with Synapse. Uh, we could do development, uh, ETL, ELT, uh, DevOps, Azure ML, Power BI, a whole bunch of things. So it's become the de facto sort of place to work. But it's also a uh, place when you create a new workspace, you automatically get a serverless pool. I want to talk about that serverless pool. When you go into your workspace, uh, this is what you get to see is uh, what's known as the hubs. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six or so hubs are currently in there. Uh, the overview plus uh, data. Anytime we have data, it shows up in there. We have the development hub where you can actually use workbooks or SQL or oh, and just about anything. Orchestrate, monitor, and manage look surprisingly like Data Factory. I'm pretty sure that that's where they come from. They do the same jobs and they have the same look and feel. Just a uh, quick mention about pools. A little bit analogous to uh, databases and uh, and the way we think of those. Synapse has three different kinds: serverless, dedicated, and Spark. The serverless one is what we're going to talk about. The dedicated one is more of the uh, you know, one we think of when we talk about Synapse. The big MPP appliance in the cloud, if you will, uh, it can do data at scale. And then, um, and as I mentioned earlier, each workspace, uh, when you create one, automatically gets a serverless pool. Uh, so let's go through this. We have a servers, serverless uh, pool worksheet. Uh, you can see uh, from here, uh, about here on, uh, that we have uh, you know, Spark, uh, Cosmos DB, and also uh, Azure Data Lake store to the right a little bit has the three data sources that you can use. As far as I know, those are the only three, the only ones that you can use. Um, as well as we end up with um, you know, the output or, or the uh, input types of being Parquet, CSV, and JSON. Um, so those are your types there. Uh, know that Parquet is probably the more performant way to do things. Uh, it's compressed, so it only has to read uh, a big piece of the data in a compressed format in the memory. Uh, it doesn't have to go back to the well as often if you want to think of it that way. Also another piece to think about when you start working with this is partitioning. Make sure you partition your data in some logical way, whether it's daily week like this might be, or you know month and year, or just yearly. However you do it, because it can do partition elimination. So if your data doesn't belong to that particular partition, it won't go looking for it somewhere it's not. Um, and also, one last thing is to take a look at uh, the way this is done. Uh, so we have different landing zones for different data. Very typical way to go. All right. Let's take a, a break from that stuff. Let's go into our Azure portal and pull up uh, one I've already created. This is actually the... Uh, Workspace itself, and uh, we saw earlier in the slide. Oh, as we saw earlier in the slide, here it is. Uh, you can see these are the hubs, but also don't uh, ignore these as well. There's a lot of cool stuff in these um, that let you uh, quickly go and look at a bunch of of uh, pre-canned, pre-stored Microsoft data that's out there. Uh, it's really kind of cool. So take a, take a few minutes and give that a try. Um, so let's go see what's in here. We've got one database, which is the serverless pool we, that create, got created when we created the workspace. There's also external data sources and file formats in here. I'll show you what those are in a second. Um, here are some scripts that I've created. I did a create table here. I'm actually working in Power BI here, where you can actually see my data set. Can can pretty much uh, do whatever 
uh, look at the actual data that's in those data sets. Now, for me, for, for my part, these are all um, um, uh, IoT data, so they're streaming, right? So it's not going to get you a lot if you go in there, but you can at least go in there and see what what is in there. And you can see on the right-hand side, there's a, a bunch of different uh, um, columns that come in. So anyway, back to our, our data set up here, our, uh, our table statement. So like if I try to do create table, you're going to see it fail. As I mentioned, there is no storage. It's not supported. That's why. All right. Now, if I look here, these have already been created, right? I did a database scope credential. I did a file format, basically telling you what kind of file it is, how it's laid out. Um, first row has column headers in it. This is your typical CSV, right? So you've got column or uh, commas as a field separator and uh, double quotes as a string delimiter. And then you've got a data source here. Uh, the data source is, uh, you know, where is it in the storage? So we're, gonna, we're describing Azure Data Lake storage. So for one thing, if we go to the data, data Lake storage itself using uh, Azure Storage Explorer, we're, this is the storage account itself. These are the blob containers. Um, you can notice down here at the bottom that the... Oh, the blob containers here, um, that's the DFS endpoint uh, that we're going to need for this. But also, um, if we right click, we can get a shared access signature and create one. And we can say, hey, I want to be able to add and create and write and delete and do all these things. Uh, this is the effectivity date, meaning this is how good, it, how long it's good for. And I can create this thing and it will automatically give me the string I'm going to need. I can just copy it and then I can fill it in over in this area up here where it says secret. Uh, and, and then you now have the way to get to the storage and have rights to it. That's one way. You can use Active Directory as well, but uh, we're not doing that today. And plus, it's a little faster using uh, shared access uh, uh, signatures over Active Directory. All right, so now as we go down with a with clause, we tell it to use, hey, here's the data source I said, it's de declared above. Here's the file format declared above. Now let's go uh, explore the, the table itself. So just run this, and there you go. That's straight up from storage. It's not in a database or anything. So there you have it, folks. This is how uh, uh, the workspace itself works, and and uh, how serverless works. So I hope you uh, I hope you get out there and start doing some of this. Thanks. Mm -hmm.